guys. Job for today is um, moving a light switch. If you can see, there's an old light switch, or oh, still in use, but it's quite defunct, if you know what I mean, because the fridge is, over the years the fridge has gone uh, deeper and deeper. It's just hidden up the button, it's really awkward. So, it's quite an easy thing to do. We're gonna lift the um, light switch from there, we're gonna put it all the way over to, so instead of one side of the door, it's gonna be on, on the other side of the door. First thing we're gonna do is look in the floorboards upstairs, see if we can find the switch line. I think I've located it, but we'll just put up the floorboard just to make sure. Now I've identified what floorboard we're gonna lift. This one, it's only a short one. It's been cut before, probably by some plumbers. Let's have a look under this one. Now we've got all the screws out, just lift this up. Can you turn the kitchen light switch off? What we're doing is we found the cable that looks like our switch line, but to test it, I'm gonna get, get the customer to um, turn the light on and off. You... Is it on or off? It's off now. Can I put it on? Put it off? On? Off. So we don't know that now that is a switch line that goes down to our switch in the kitchen. It goes down just there into the switch. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe into some mobile conduit. It goes straight down there. It's very important to note that what we've got here is one way light switch. But there'll be different procedures if you want a two way light switch. And as I say with everything, don't attempt this unless you're electrically competent. It could cost you a lot more in the long run rather than getting a proper electrician out. Next thing we do is we check the height switch with this light. You want to get the same height on three three there. You want to measure up exactly halfway. So that's 29. So we want it 14.5. Uh, 14.5 is there. And that's the centre of our box. That's that, it's all nice and straight. Draw around him. That's going to be our box for our light switch. So now what we have to do, we have to get the feed cable in or the chasing route. It's very important when you're putting cables in, that you make it in as a cable zone. So if that's gonna be our switch, we can only go straight up, straight down, or across. There are other zones, but if you're electrically competent, you should know them anyway. You can take it all the way up to the ceiling. That's our route for our cable. Gonna use SDS on this one. What I do, if I've got anything like this, I'm cutting out to save the damage. What I use first is got my multi tool, but it's got a blunt end you can see, it's got no teeth on it at all. Just use that to mark out, as you'll see, it saves as much damage, at least you get it through the first lot of plaster, and it's much easier then. First cut in, a little bit of damage, but nowhere near as much as if you went straight in with the SCS. Nice little box.
sometimes find it's easier when you're doing the last little bit to use a hammer and chisel. Always check that it's in properly, get your spirit level, run it over the top of it. You can hear that scraping? That means it's not in at the top bit there. Try it again with our spirit level. You can see it's all underneath the outer level. All you need to do is make sure that it's level with the um, lugs, low position, and you've got enough movement there to make it a nice straight box. Perfect. You don't, you don't have to get this bit dead straight, but what you have to do is put it on the, in the middle of the lugs and just move it up. Uh, until it's straight. And this box has got an adjustable lug. So you can move it up and down a little bit, a little bit of play. The final bit to do is to drill into the under the floorboards. channel in, put our root into the under the floorboards, we just put this into the ceiling. So we've got a, a rod and chain on one side and we've got a magnet on the other side. Should be able to meet them up and put it through. Now we'll put our cable up from underneath. Gonna go along with a cable rod and magnet. See if we can get the other end of it. So we know that the cable is on the end of that. It's just a case of pulling it through. There we go. There's our cable. What we do is that we mark our back box, we know it's straight already. And that's our two screw holes, the green look marks. plugs in. <coughs> Two raw plugs in. We want to take this knockout out. So like so. Put in a grommet and you're not getting damage the cable when it goes through. See that? Screw him in. I always use a bit of oval conduit on it. I don't need to. I just find it gives a bit more protection to the cable. Straighten out the cable. Mark the length of our conduit. Slightly lipping into the ceiling. Gives a little bit more protection. Just look up. Doesn't have to be pretty. So 
side conduit over the cable and cable into your back box. Now hold that in there perfect to have something looking like that. Cable it needs to terminate and conduit going all went way into the ceiling. Next thing to do really is to tidy up because we've got a bit of a mess as you can see. Tidy up, get rid of the dust and we're going to need to do some plastering on that. Right so we've got our conduit in, cable ready to go, ready to do the filler. Just going to show you mixing up the filler, nice clean bucket. A bit of filler. Probably about a cup, couple of cups full. Use a little. Use a little bit of water at first. You can always add a bit more, it's just easier. You want to get it to a consistency where you can't see any of the powder anymore. It's like a thick, cheesy sort of cream sort of thing. There you go. That's, that's about what thickness you want. Perfect. Like a, like a dough sort of thing, if you know what I mean. We start at the bottom. Keep the bucket underneath. first coat what you're doing is you're packing out the hole get some around the back box as well Packing it into the hole, as you can see. And what we do is we get a bigger scraper, scrape along the top, makes a nice little line.
So that's have to fill in <coughs> all nicely up to the top. Yeah, probably going to need a little sand, but not much. Uh, don't think you're going to need another fill. Depends if it sucks it in. Sometimes with plasters, it sucks it in a bit. So you have a little dip. You might need a second fill on that. Yeah, it looks alright. Once it dries out and you uh, paint over it, you won't even know it's there. So, stripping back the cables. Putting the CPC sleeving on. Because it's single conduct sensor terminals and they're quite small, I'm going to bend it over so you get good contact. As blue as a switch line, I need to mark out with brown, brown um, tape like so. So both switch lines, that's why I mark that out with a brown tape. You can see there, brown tape. And we terminated the cables. I always put the brown into the common. You can do it the other way around, it doesn't make no difference. And putting the other side into the old one. Again, you can put it in the old one or old two if you've got a two way switch. All it means is it's going to operate in the opposite direction. So up is on and down is off. This is a class two item, plastic. So there's no earth um, terminal one on the actual switch. So we'll just terminate into the back box. Tucking the cables out of the way. Yeah, level to make sure it's all nice and level. And that's the light switch on. What I'm going to do now is we're at the point where we need to connect it to the mains. So I'm going to safely isolate it uh, using a safe isolation procedure and then do full testing before I energize it. I'm not going to go into a full testing because if you don't know the testing procedure, you shouldn't be doing this. Okay, and I've shown before why it's important to carry out the testing procedure. I could quite easily just go and energize it and it'll work fine. But will it have a fault? Could I have nicked a bit of uh, insulation? Who knows, that's why we test it. And I will be doing that. <laughs> I hope it hasn't because I don't want to have to rip that out again. Right, we've identified that this uh, cable leads straight to, one when it goes to the light, one end goes to the switch. Uh, that end goes to the switch, that end goes to the light. So I'm just, I have tested it, but I'm just gonna do a final test with the bolt stick. I'm gonna cut it here.
we're going to do is I'm going to use ideal uh, splice lines. I find they're perfect for extending cables. Tug test on them all in there nice and solid into the maintenance free box now. All in there nicely, as you can see. Do up the lid, and then what I like to do is I like to label it up. Light switch. So what I've done, kitchen light switch, with the old light switch cable. I'm not sure if you can see that. With the old light switch cable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into a Wago box as well. Not connected to anything, to, but it's just for reassurance. And if anyone sees it in the future, don't know what it is. And label it up again. This used kitchen light switch. Just put, just put it in there like that. Put it back. So if someone comes in the future and they need that light switch re-energized or whatever, we know we're good to go. finished testing all tested fine uh, tests that we completed was um, R1 R2 installation resistance test and we've done a ZS test all the way to the end of the line if you don't know what te them tests are then it's a lot easier to get an electrician in it's a relatively simple job for someone who knows what they're doing um, let's have a look there we go. One working light switch. All tested and good. Um, what we're going to do, the cables are still in the wall up here, running down to the light switch. The customer will be decorating this at some, all this at some point. And you can see, we just started to decorate a little bit. But I've assured them that that's, un, that's not energised, so they can take that off, fill it in. Um, there's no need to pull the cables out of the wall, you can leave them in there, they're perfectly fine. If you like this video, we do have a lot more how-to guides in our playlist section, how to put in extra sockets, uh, things like that. Have a look there, see if there's anything that you like. If you're not electrically competent, then don't try it. There's so many things that could go wrong, the worst thing being you could kill yourself or others. Um, don't forget to like comment, share and prescribe.